All right, guys, so today we're here to do another arcade and one-up video, and today we're here to talk about the Miss Pac-Man cocktail machine. Now, I'm really excited about this machine because I never actually owned a cocktail machine. I hardly even ever played with one. If I played with one in the arcades, it was when I was a kid and I don't really remember them. It's not something I usually gravitated towards. And I've been doing more and more, you know, look into the cocktail experience, uh, even though I have all these other machines and stuff, on how different of an experience the cocktail machines actually give you. Uh, when you're playing, you know, head-to-head -head games like Galaga, like Pac-Man and stuff, with the screen rotating, which I'll show you guys, like, when one person's playing and then the other person plays, and there's a lot of back and forth and getting high scores and stuff, and it's just a fun way to play these games. So, I went into it, and I was like, all right, Miss Pac-Man, uh, I don't own anything in this house that's Pac-Man, and that's the iconic, you know, uh, thing from the 80s and the 90s as far as arcade machines went. So... Since I didn't want to just get a Pac-Man stand-up machine because that defeats the purpose for me because that's just a wasted room in my arcade room because I can already play Pac-Man in regular form the same way on my Rec Room Masters machine, so that didn't really seem to fit. So this fit perfectly because this gives me a different experience that I won't get on the Rec Room Masters machine that I have, and now I have a cocktail machine. So when I got this, I was really excited, and of course, I went down that rabbit hole. I was like, hey, this has 10 games on it, but... What I really want to do is add a lot more games to it. So let me start off by giving you guys a quick overview of the system itself. Fully modded out with a RetroPie 4 that's sitting in here to give you guys a look of what the interface looks like, what the, what the images that I'm using, and what some of the game experience is like when you're playing in cocktail form. So let's start off with that, and then we'll come back and we'll do my final thoughts. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech, going for a brekkie is the gaming tech, gaming tech is the gaming tech, gaming tech is all right, guys, so here we are with the Miss Pac-Man cocktail table. So as I was telling you guys before um, uh, in the intro of this video, I didn't want to mod this where I couldn't reverse it if I didn't want to. So I kept all of the pieces, and I didn't really mod much. Basically, I just changed the, um, the, the you know, get the LCD converter board for the back of the unit and obviously the RetroPie itself. But I kept all the stock controls for this one because it, it does me good enough. Um you know, one day I might change the joystick out because the joystick feels a little loose. But for the most part, it does its justice. Me and my wife played. I asked her what she thought when she was playing all the games. And she had no complaints at all. So I don't think anybody is going to complain about the controls. So since I didn't want to mod anything, as you guys can see, this is all set up with the same exact controls on both sides of the unit. So I didn't do any modifications there. So obviously that leaves me a little short changed on the actual buttons. Now eventually, maybe one day, I'll drill a hole here. And add another button either here or here in the top corner. But I didn't want to do that right now. Uh, I didn't really find a need to. So what I did instead is you could do one of two things if you run into a situation like this and you get this cocktail cabinet, uh, Miss Pac-Man. So you can either A, add an extra button yourself like I said. B, you can also do it another simple way which is obviously this being the start button, this being the coin button, and then you just play games that only work with two buttons, the A button and the B button. So you could do that. What I chose to do instead is I have this mapped as a start button. I have this mapped as A, B, and C. And this image I'm using is specifically for a three button game. So it matches perfectly because all this game, all the games on this list will be for three buttons. So it matches up perfectly to A, B, um, and X. So those are set there. And then for coin games, I either do one of two things. Either I set and maim. Some of the games have free play. So I just set the games to free play if I need to. Or if they don't have a free play option, because obviously most of them don't actually from what I've come across. This little keyboard, which I'm sure you guys have seen in other videos that people do for modding and stuff like that. Um, this little keyboard, I just have it mapped to B. So you just press B and that adds the coins that you need to in the game. So we keep this keyboard to the side here when we need to. Uh, when we're not using it, you know, we just come onto the other side so it's hidden away from people's view and it kind of just stays right here and just attaches like that with some Velcro. And uh, since it's from the other angle of my game room, no one sees it because it's hiding from the back. And then when someone needs it, you know, you just pull it out and you bring it back over here and then you're ready to go. And that seems to work really well. Like I said, if you have free play, then you don't need to use a keyboard at all if those games support free play. Um, but if not, then you use this keyboard and you're good. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with that option for the time being. Uh, and, and maybe forever. I don't really think it matters that much when people come over to hit the B button. If you need to enter a coin on the keyboard, it's wireless. You know, it has rechargeable batteries. No big deal. And then I can keep this thing stock and looking as good. And I don't have to worry about ruining the art or anything. Like I said, all I did was swap out the LCD 
uh, the, the board on the back and put in the LCD converter board for HDMI, just like I did on the Marvel cabinet, which I did do as well, and modded that one. Uh, just put that in there, put the RetroPie in there, and uh, I found this nice vertical image, as you guys are looking at here. Um, so this is working really, really well. 99% uh, of the stuff has the artwork. And you can see all the different games. They all have, you know, different things that you can play. So let me show you what's one of the, uh, a few of the cool things of what I really like about a table. As somebody who has never actually had, has never, a person who's never actually had a cocktail cabinet before. This is really cool because you can play head to head. So here's an example of Pac-Man. And I think this one is set to free play mode, if I remember correctly. Um, so this is not Miss Pac-Man that comes with the table. This is regular Pac-Man. So yeah, this one's set to free play. So you can see. Free play there on the corner, press one or two players. If I press one player, the game is going to start and it's just going to be me playing in a vertical form. But if you press a second player, and this is true for any game in cocktail, when it's cocktail mode is enabled, if I come over here and hit the two player button here, you can see that this is now over here, right? So we're playing on these controls. I'm moving up and down. We're sitting here playing Pac-Man. Let me die on purpose real quick. And I die, right? So what's going to happen is, is now player two is going to go and you can see now the screen rotated and now we're playing on this side and now you can play on this side of the cabinet and you basically just go back and forth playing these games. You're just going back and forth and you're trying to compete for the high score. So it's, uh, like I said, I never had a cocktail cabinet before. So I'm, uh, obviously you guys probably know this if you've seen a cocktail cabinet before, but I just thought it was really cool that you can get into these competitive games and, and, and basically just play these games and, and just have a lot of fun playing them. And, you know, there's other games that do different things. For example, let's say that I wanted to um, play Windjammers, for example. Now, Windjammers, on its own, is obviously not a vertical game. So, let's go ahead and find Windjammers real quick. So, if I start Windjammers on here. And there's about like almost 400 games on here. So there's a lot of three button games that work really well on a cabinet like this, even without any modification. There's a lot of three button games. The only thing you may run into is that this is a four way joystick. So, um, and some of these games are obviously using either four way for Pac-Man and Galaga and stuff like that. And other games like, like may use um, eight directions. So you could replace the joystick if you want. So far, I know people will go crazy. Um, but I haven't noticed any issues with the games we want to play on here uh, as far as being able to move So I'm keeping it stock for now But the joystick may be something that I upgrade to an eight-way joystick uh, or a switchable four-way to eight-way joystick That are out there, but you can see here. This is what I'm talking about now The screen is basically split in half and this is also set for free play You can see so there's no coins needed because it's saying push for player one or player two and you can see that each player gets half of the screen and it fills up perfectly and then each of you guys can just come in here and you're basically just playing each one and you're basically just you know sitting here you're playing you got to hit the button on the other side here hit that hit the beach And here you are, ready to go. And you're here moving. And you can obviously play right here. I can't do this with one hand, but you guys get the idea. Um, so yeah, that's another really cool way that you can play games on the cabinet. And here's another one for you guys that's also really cool. So there's games like 1941, which were already games that were in vertical form so you're basically not playing a game that's going to give you two screens like horizontally like that because this game was already made vertically um so the game's meant to be played this way so instead what happens when this boots up is the screen actually splits vertically so if i came in here and i think this one is one of the ones that does need a coin so we can do that now when this starts up this is loading up here and i know that this one needs a coin so basically i just come here I hit the B button twice. You can see the coins are in here. Actually, it is set to free play, I like. But um, you can come in here, and now you if the other player hits player start, you both can come in here, play these games, and you're both coming in here, 
and playing some games. So that's really, really cool how that screen splits and, and what's really cool about this cabinet that I really like. Um, that's really, really cool. I just squished the screen on purpose because the noise is obviously crazy. So, um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this turned out. There were some hurdles that I had to overcome. Um, you know, finding an image out there that actually gives you a vertical a vertical thing for RK1 of to be all set up like I have now uh, is not easy to come by uh, for everything to be set up. This image was basically plug and play. The image that I'm using here came with like 380 games, came with an attract mode and stuff. Um, you go into emulation station and you set up all your controls and stuff. And then once you're done setting up your controls, you can go into the options and just click on a track mode, which is what I'm in. And then everything is in vertical. If you stay in emulation station and you go back in there, then things are going to be horizontal like this. But once you come into a track mode, once you're done setting up your controls and any configurations that you need to do in emulation station, you come into a track mode and you get this nice interface of scrolling through all these games and it just works really, really well. Um, you know, I'm having a really fun time with it. The, oh, the other thing, so I mentioned that I had to change the LCD panel on the, on the, on the, um, on the screen underneath and take out the RK1 up board. Obviously, something else that I had to do was obviously add the encoder board for these controls. So the encoder board is sitting in there um, that I obviously had to switch out. I totally forgot about that, but that's obvious. So I got the encoder board sitting in there, and I'm really happy with it. I mean, the games... The games that came with the table, which I already tested with me and my wife, we played it. Miss Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Dig Dug 2, Galaga, all these games, Mappy and stuff that they added in an update for this table. You know, it it's all on here, and I have all the other games on top of it, and they work just as well as they did. The first day that I got this Miss Pac-Man machine, me and my wife played the 10 stock games that were on it, and they perform really, really well. Uh, I had no issues with the games. Um, they were really fun. They rotated back and forth, just like I showed you before when you were playing the games, and they ran flawlessly. And the table with those 10 games are fantastic for a majority of people who are looking for, like, a Pac-Man machine. And I think this is the definitive way of playing Pac-Man games and, and games like this. Um, but then we went down the rabbit hole of, like, hey, we modded Marvel. This shouldn't be too hard. Uh, and actually ended up being a little bit harder than Marvel just because the controls are a lot tighter in here and, and uh, you know, things were more annoying. But, um... Once we got it all figured out and we found this image finally that gave us an easy starting place, um, you know, I added some of my games onto the image afterwards and configured the settings and stuff to my liking. And now we have over 380 games on here that we can play. And it's fantastic. Like I said, don't be scared that, like, if you don't want to mod this thing out like I was because you're not good with woodworking or stuff like that, like me, because I'm terrible at that stuff. Um, for this one, I just left it stock. There's so many good three-player, three-button games. As long as you don't care about fighters, and since I modded Mar the Marvel cabinet and I have a full, you know, Rec Room Masters machine and stuff, I had no reason to care about putting Street Fighter in on here and stuff. So I stuck to only three-button games, and there's a lot of those. You know, you got classics like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Simpsons you can play on here, Windjammers that I just showed you, and then all the original classics like Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Galaga, all the games that you would want to play on a cabinet style like this. And it runs fantastic. I have no issues with it at all now that everything is set up and going. And uh, it was a lot of fun to put together. A lot of learnings that I did throughout this process. And I'm really, really excited to have this cabinet, uh, you know, as part of my part of my room now. Because I never had one of these cabinets before. So let me uh, get to the table. And let me tell you guys my final thoughts on this cabinet itself. For those of you guys who are not going to mod it, I'll tell you guys what I think about the cabinet overall. And then for those of you guys for modding potential. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, so that was a look into the Miss Pac-Man cocktail machine. Now, I know I didn't show you any gameplay because it's already been fully modded, but like I said, I did try out the cabinet, you know, with the 10 games that were included. It comes with eight, and then there's a quick download that you have to do. Uh, you basically take the back, uh, you take the board on the back, you bring it next to your computer, you use a, a regular micro USB cable, you plug it into your computer. There's like a three or four minute video on their website. You just patch it, and then you get Mappy and um, Pack and Pal, I think. Two games that are added to the system. And uh, then you get 10 games in total. Now, all those games play fantastic. And honestly, I would have bought the cabinet, even if this was unmoddable, like if RK 1-Ups were not moddable at all, uh, for whatever reason, I still would have bought this machine because the experience of playing Galaga and Miss Pac-Man and what else is on there and Dig Dug and Dig Dug 2 and all the other Pac-Man games um, and Galaxian and all those games is much better on this cocktail cabinet than I would ever play on the Rec Room Masters machine. Now, granted, my Rec Room Masters machine is a 32-inch screen, fully modded out, can play all the games and stuff, but I'd much rather play, especially games that are 1v1. I'd rather play 
Pac-Man and Galaga and stuff 1v1 on a machine like this and going on my Requiem Masters machine and just rotating in and out when one person dies. This feels more like a head-to-head -head table. The screen flips and stuff like I showed you guys earlier and you're, and you're basically competing for high scores back and forth and it's just a much more fun and cool experience. Same thing when you're playing other head-to-head -head games like, you know, Windjammers and stuff that I showed you. Uh, when the screen gets split in half, that's awesome as well. And then also playing those uh, vertical shooters and stuff where the screen splits like in a vertical form and you can use one side for one player and one side for the other. Awesome, awesome experience to play these games two players in cocktail form that I've never actually experienced before. And let's not forget that I'm talking about the two player experience because that's what I think the cocktail really excels at. But these games are still fantastic even as a one player experience. You know, playing in this uh, like vertical shooters and stuff on the vertical screen like this is still a much better experience than playing on a, a larger screen that's a 16 by 9 screen that's not a vertical screen like you know playing these vertical shooters you have that whole entire width of the screen it takes up the full entire screen you get to play these games and it just looks fantastic and it's so much fun to play that way so i'm really really happy with the stock games that came on here and they did a fantastic job of the 10 games that are on here and i would have bought this cabinet uh, for the quality of it it's definitely their best cocktail they've ever made definitely better construction and better packaging than the street fighter 2 ever was and it's fantastic the control the buttons are you know arcade one-up buttons and joysticks um it, it does come with a four-way uh joystick on here so it's up to you if you want to replace it and stuff um or if you want to replace the buttons if you're into that kind of thing for me i'm not that anal so the buttons feel fine to me um you know if they ever break on me or stuff i'll replace them and myself and get better buttons but me and my wife played and i wasn't sitting here complaining about the buttons when i was playing they, they played just fine um so, fantastic cabinet, guys. Really worth it. If you guys are looking for a cocktail cabinet from Arcade 1UP, this one is fantastic. And definitely my favorite cocktail cabinet that they currently have. And the best one that they've made. And my favorite Pac-Man machine that they've made, for sure. Now, setting that aside, and let's talk about the actual modding aspect of this. As you guys saw, uh, I modded this with the RetroPie 4. This thing was a pain in the ass, for sure, to mod. Uh, the Marvel uh, Cap vs. Capcom machine that I did before for Fighters Only was much easier than this one and i thought this one was going to be pretty easy because i was like oh well i'm not modding any of the buttons i'm not adding extra buttons or anything like that i'm just going to use the stock buttons uh, we're going to add the encoder underneath which i did we're going to change the um you know obviously add the lcd encoder board on the back of the monitor plug all that stuff in and it's going to be dandy first of all finding a vertical image is not very easy so you have to basically make one on your own uh, i did i managed to find one which is the one i used that works and plays fantastic and it does work on the RetroPie 4, thank God, which is called the Button Masher. Uh, that's the name of the image, and it works fantastic. And I was able to add games on top of there with the games that were missing on there. It came with like 380 games as a 16 gig image. I got a, a 64 gig card so I could add more games to it that makes sense on this cabinet because uh, the Button Masher is the image that I use was basically vertical games only. But I also wanted games like Windjammers and stuff that aren't vertical but still play fantastic on this cabinet because of that split screen and stuff. So, um, but yeah, there was just a lot of small issues that I ran into with this one with the controllers not working uh, because um, when I got the encoder board for the first time, like I said, I haven't modded a lot. So I got the encoder board and the encoder board has slots for the two pins. And I look at the joystick for the arcade one up and it has four four pins on it, uh, like the joystick uh, uh, plug. So I was like, how am I supposed to do this? Not knowing that you could just unplug those little wires by clipping them off taking the little white piece out and I just took them right off and then plugged each individual wire. But you have to be careful that at least they're color coded, but you have to be careful that you put the left, the two lefts together, the two rights together, uh, the, the two up and down, uh, the two ups together and two downs together on each individual encoder section. So that was a painstaking thing that I'll never have to face again. Cause now I know, but somebody who's never modded one of these machines that ran into that joystick issue. Cause the, the uh, Marvel one was just, uh, uh, the encoder board already had the slots for the joy, uh, the the uh, two slots, so it was really easy to connect everything up. So, and then of course I had some issues with the actual vertical image, regardless, with a lot of issues with getting the control set up right and stuff like that. That I finally worked through and got all that up and running. So after three days of nonstop trying images and, and working out the kinks and, and downloading games and stuff, it's finally at a perfect place. And, and it's now working fantastic. I'm not even going to mess with it anymore. I showed you guys that the only cab out of here is that I didn't decide to add an extra button because I'm not good with woodwork. And I didn't want to mess up the artwork or anything. I wanted to leave it as stock as possible. So if I ever wanted to revert back, I can. So what I did instead is I um, use the, the same buttons that are on there. And uh, I have 
no complaints about using the, the, the buttons that are on there. Uh, there may be a time where I do replace the joystick. Uh, you know, I had my wife play on this and a couple of other people just to see what they thought and see if they complained about the fact that this is a four-way joystick. And some of these games that I have on here are four-way, like Pac-Man and Galaga, but some of them are also eight-way, like, um, you know, uh, TM, TMNT is, I think, an eight-way game. And The Simpsons, I'm pretty sure, is an eight-way game, too. And is it does it play perfect? No. But I think for people who've never even played an arcade machine before, uh, and they come over, they're just going to have a lot of fun playing TMT and The Simpsons in a cocktail form. So uh, I don't think they're ever going to notice. I had fun playing it. I wasn't screaming at the controls for the variety of games I was playing. For fighters, yeah, don't don't use an, a four-way stick for an eight-way uh, fighter because then you're not going to be able to do half the moves. That's obviously pointless. But for directions and stuff, like playing the vertical shooters and uh, TMNT, The Simpsons, and, and stuff like that, I didn't really have any complaints uh, too much. Uh, it doesn't play as good as, you know, an eight-way stick on my Rec Room Masters machine, but it plays well enough where I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about the controls. And if I choose to down the line, I can replace that joystick with one of those ones that are four-way and eight-way um, changeable that you can do. So I could do that if I want to in the future. But right now, I'm really, really liking where this cabinet sat, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it, guys. I'm really happy to get this arcade into the into the home if you guys have any questions if you guys are looking to mod your miss pac-man and you have questions about what you may want or what you want to do uh leave those questions down below i'll definitely be answering all your questions um that may come up and you guys have questions about to mod this thing but definitely a really really great uh arcade cabinet from arcade one up like i said even without modding it's one of my favorite machines from them because of the cocktail form and i'm really happy with it and if you do decide to mod it you'll just get that many more games to play in the fashion that you show here just know that there's going to be some painstaking stuff if you go the pie route like i did instead of a full-on computer uh there's going to be some some painstaking stuff that you're going to have to go through to get this up and running but it was a lot of fun guys if you guys have any questions again leave them down below if not thank you guys for watching Till next time